Hello, I'm Joseph Billingsley with Pelican Publishing. We're joined today by Dave Dixon, the man who created the New Orleans Saints and brought the Superdome to reality. Uh, Dave provides an insider's perspective on these and other events in his book, The Saints, the Superdome, and the Scandal. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Uh, great pleasure because I'm so proud of our city, particularly at, at this moment. Well, the moment would be that one week from today, the Saints will take the field against the Indianapolis Colts for their first ever Super Bowl appearance. What has the tremendous citywide upwelling of emotion and support for this team meant to you personally, uh, given your close involvement with oh, the team? Oh, it's given me a great feeling of warmth and delight and pleasure toward our city, but it does not surprise me, mm -hmm. because New Orleans has always been a great football city. Well, the team is riding high at the moment. People have been reliving great <clears throat> moments in Saints history. Take us back to the earliest days of the Saints history, Dave. How were you and others able to get this team? Well, uh, Mayor Morrison called me. Uh, 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 Mayor Morrison had a press conference and he announced that he wanted to build a stadium out on City Park for a Major League Baseball team. And I knew, I knew Chuck pretty well, uh, personally and socially and, and uh, business-wise. And So I called him and I said, Chuck, uh, uh, New Orleans is a, is a pretty good baseball town, but it's a superb football city. Mm -hmm. Always has been. I said, Tulane has always been the college football attendance leader of the South. We taught LSU how to enjoy football and uh, so forth. And I said, uh, so uh, uh, really, and we have a great, great football stadium, better by far than anything in existence in the National Football League. And uh, Chep says, I agree with you, Dave. Get me a major league football team. Get me an NFL team. And I said, well, I'm pretty certain I can get to Lane Stadium, and if I can, uh, it's done. Uh, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never leave it until it's done. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I didn't realize it would take me five or six years, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, I got to Lane Stadium, as I knew I would, and uh, we started putting on some preseason games, and things went extremely well. <laughs> It fell my lot to, to, uh, uh, to introduce New Orleans as the first city of the Old South, including Atlanta and all these other places, uh, to integrate sports fully. And we had first come, first serve, no tricks, no anything, just straight out. Any seat that's not sold, it's open to anybody. And, and that was a requirement of the NFL? Was it wasn't necessarily a requirement of the NFL, but I knew it would be. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I had told Tulane, I said, now listen, I'm going, to integrate, I'm going to integrate the stadium. And Tulane told me we would have it no other way. Made me proud to be a Tulane al alumnus. And, uh, so uh, uh, I thought, well, that's, that's just wonderful. And so with that attitude, I, I never hesitated. And, and when the first gentleman came in to buy a ticket, who was, as we used to say, of color, uh, the... <laughs> He said, he was incredulous, he says, you mean I can sit wherever I want? And I said, of course, and, uh, uh, and he said, anything that's not sold. And so he said, hallelujah. And I had to turn away, it brought tears to my eyes almost, you know, I, I choked up momentarily, and I realized that what I had been fearing, and with a de not exactly fearing, but with a degree of trepidation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, was actually one of the great proud moments of my whole life. I, I would rank that certainly one of the top ten moments I've ever experienced in life. The, the, the day that I realized that I was really doing something that was of great, great importance nationally and, and locally. And so I was very proud of myself and very proud of mostly, I wasn't so proud of myself, I was so proud and, and I said, and in fact, saying to myself, I told you so. I told you it would work. And, right. and New Orleans is that kind of city. Always has been. Once you got the stadium lined up, was there any kind of political wheeling and dealing behind the scenes to get the Saints uh, franchise officially here? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, there was. <clears throat> the uh, problem was that the NFL, uh, now mind you, these were dollars in 1965, uh, and the NFL wanted $9 million for a franchise, and they had come to the realization that New Orleans was well equipped, and so they were ready to have New Orleans. And, uh, uh, so we looked around, and we couldn't find anybody locally, and they wanted it in one individual. No, no problem at all if you could have several people, but one individual. And so um, 
uh, we uh, finally, through some close friends of mine uh, and uh, Jones Walker Law Firm, had a good client from Texas, uh, the Meekham family, who had a lot of Louisiana oil interests, and they were very interested in doing it, and so we were happy to go along with them. And it worked out uh, pretty well. Young John Meekham uh, was, uh, was a very fine citizen today, but something he was still a playboy then, you know. He was still just a young guy sowing some oats, and uh, 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 I don't think he took it quite as seriously as he maybe would have today. And uh, But anyway, uh, I think that uh, the day that uh, uh, Meekham sold and Tom Benson took over, uh, this was a different era. Uh, Mr. Benson didn't know anything at all about football, but he knew a lot about business. Right. And uh, so, uh, uh, and he uh, didn't know anything at all about public relations, and he's learning still. <laughs> but uh, uh, and so, but he's done an excellent job as an owner, and I'd say the Saints are among the top five or six franchises in the National Football League.